Another video of Power Back. Welcome back to some more Stormworks. I am Stormrunner Gaming, and today I'm going to be giving you guys an advanced engine tutorial for Stormworks so that you guys can build your own engines, your own boats, your own vehicles within Stormworks in the new advanced mode. And the advanced mode for the engines and everything came through the latest survival update. And I know a lot of you will be following along with me to do some of your first engines, so I'm hopefully going to go slow enough for you guys here but you can always pause the video if you need to and follow what I've done but we're gonna be first creating a little block here so we can put our engine on and slap a small engine now the first thing you'll realize if you pull out a pipe and bring it to any of these ports right here it'll tell you what you need to connect to each of those things and of course if you do spawn in the engine itself, it'll when you hover over it, it'll tell you what you are missing for everything. If it is red, that means you're missing that. And if it's green, that means it's good. And for some reason, we already have coolant, but it's only an engine block. Not exactly sure what that's all about, but I've got most of the things we need here. Of course, I'm gonna have to switch out some of these things because we only do have the one hot bar. But I'm going to start with our cooling system and I'm gonna to have to grab a couple different types of piping here. So I'm gonna throw out that and that so we can get our T section and angle. And I also am going to color code it for you guys. So our cooling run will be yellow. And we're gonna start at our coolant out running a pipe and then a T section here. We flip that around. Now we're gonna put our small fluid tank on there facing down so it connects to that. Then we're going to select it and put it fluid type to water so that we have water running through our cooling system. And you can run cooling systems without water, but as I've tested it, it is a bit hotter than regular. So I do suggest putting in the water as well into your system. But now we're going to get a radiator out and connect it up there. Then as well as a radiator in my system, I usually do put a hot plate as well, or excuse me, a heat sink as well. So you don't have to do the heat sink in the system, but it will help keep temperatures down as I've seen from some of my builds. So now all we need to do is take the rest of this and run it back to the coolant into the engine from the entire system. And this should hopefully alleviate the coolant problem. So we can also, I'm gonna show you guys how to hook up a lot of the logic for your data as well after we completed all the physical stuff for the engines but that'll be a little bit later in the video so if you guys are interested to in seeing that you can skip forward a little bit but now we've got our coolant run done in the front of the engine and now we do need to go and grab a large tank large fluid tank to put some fuel into the engine and i'm going to be coloring that red for this build we can flip it around that way. There we go. And put it right next to where it needs to go into the engine for our engine fuel. And you, all you have to do for your fuel is bring it up and connect it with some pipes. You don't need any pumps when you are connecting it like this, but if you do spawn in fuels or something, you will need a pipe to pipe it out, or pump it out, excuse me, of that hole. So now we're making sure we've got the fluid tank set to diesel and nothing else. So that should be good. And now we can move on to our exhaust and air. We are going, we already do have our fluid port and our exhaust port. So we're going to color our next part gray for our exhaust and run that up. And while you are building a ship, you do want to put your exhaust ports near the top of the ship because they can get water on them but they can't be completely submerged if you completely submerge them then you may lose the exhaust for your engine and it will conk out on you but the even more important part of the engine is your air supply and if this gets any water in it the engine will almost it may shut down on you if you lose your air intake so especially when you're going up against a tsunami the tsunami crushing over you may take out the air intake for your engine. So 
You can start it back though, which is a good thing without having to bleed the system or anything. So I'll, I know that from experience, but our last part of the engine is the engine power run right here. And we're gonna be connecting together a 90 degree angle pipe. And we're gonna need a couple different things here. We're going to need our clutch to bring power out of it. We're going to need, or I'm going to be putting on a gearbox as well to speed up the gears. And I'm going to be putting on a propeller on the end of it to show you guys where you need to put your propellers on the back of your boat and how to connect them up. So first, of course, you need to put the clutch on that. And we're going to be putting a T-piece right here so that we can put in a small generator as well to generate a little bit of power for the battery I'll be putting in a bit later. And then we're going to be putting the gearbox and watch out, you want to be very weary of the orientation of it where the arrows face where the power is coming from, not where it's going out. So I have mine facing towards the engine. And now we can bring this power output out to our propeller. And of course you can make this branch out with some more T pieces, two multiple propellers, but for right now I'm keeping it simple with one propeller. Alright, so that is all of the physical stuff. Of course, when you are building a boat, you may want to put on more generators, more gearboxes in line. You may want to put more fuel into it, more cooling if you're going to have a lot of stress on the engine. And of course, you're going to have to run your exhaust and air ports up to the top of your ship. But now I'm going to be setting up the logic and power for it. So first off, we need to get a medium battery and some digital displays as well as our controls for it. So I'm taking out a toggle button, a push button, as well as the throttle. And I'm going to set it back to the white color as we're coming back here. And you're going to need two throttles, one for the throttle of the engine and one to turn on the clutch or connect it to the engine. There are other ways to connect it to the engine, but I've just been doing it with the throttle because it's the easiest way to, instead of setting up a lot of logic. And we're going to be putting a push button and a toggle button as well on here. One is for starting the engine and the other one is to change gears on our gearbox. And as well as that, I'm going to be setting up some meters here to look at what is happening within our engine as well as our energy production for it. So now that we are in the logic, we're going to be connecting the battery to our digital display here. And before I do anything else, I do want to name everything so I connect everything. Oh, battery. Battery. Power. We need to name this. We have RPMs from the engine. Temperature. And of course you don't have to put all this monitoring stuff for your engine, but it is good practice if you want to be able to know what is happening and what may be failing on your engine, or if you're out of fuel or something. So I do it for most of my builds, but we also want to, this is our push button, so we're going to name it Start Engine. And I'll show you guys where to connect everything up once I'm done changing it up. We'll have our gear change here as well. And we're going to have one for our engine throttle and one for the clutch. All right, so now that we've got everything named, it'll make the connecting up logic a bit easier because it'll show up the name at the top of when we hover over it. And so we can take our RPMs and bring it over and connect it to the RPMs, rotations per second for the engine, as well as the temperature readout. And I'm also going to be adding the fuel reading. Then we can add in our clutch, our engine throttle here that goes to the circle that's missing the middle on the engine. And then the start engine is going to the red circle without a middle on the engine and our gear change is going straight to the gearbox. And while I'm on the gearbox, you can go back into your select mode here 
click on your gearbox and change the gear ratio up to whatever you want it. You can go from 1 to 1 to 1 to 2, or you can go all the way up to 1 to 3, but of course that does put more stress on the engine, and it can heat up due to that. So I usually keep it at a 1 to 2 gear ratio. So whenever we turn that button on, it'll speed up our propellers. And now we are also going to have to do logic, but the power logic. So if you go into your logic button up here, go from data down to our electric one. And we have our battery, our medium battery, our electric storage here. We're going to have to connect that up to all the little pluses on all of our different objects we've got here. We also need to connect it up to the engine, the clutch, and the gearbox as well as all of our controls and if you guys did watch my latest electrical video i put out a day or two ago you know you can add this you can put a circuit breaker in the middle of this to control when all the stuff is powered or not but for right now i'm just going to be hot wiring it directly to the battery and then we can take our small generator and connect it directly up to our battery to run it and now we should be done with our engine like a nice neat little thing. Let's spawn it in and see how it runs. Alright. So of course once we get it in we're gonna have to take the engine throttle and move it anywhere between about a 0.25 to 0.5 or 25 to 50 percent throttle and then hold our start engine button for about three seconds and we should get this little engine running pretty well now and you can increase the throttle and there it goes and our temperature is shooting up but the rpms are max and the temperature will shoot up pretty quickly but i believe if you keep it under 100 it should be fine our power is still there and our fuel is running out pretty quickly but we still got a lot of it so now we can engage our clutch by moving that from zero to one as you can see the rpms did go down a little bit from 18.9 to 17.9 and we have our propeller and our battery power going up yet again. And then we can turn on our gear change. And as you can see, the propeller is going much faster now. We can at least hear it going faster. It looks like it's going slower for some reason, but maybe that's just the game. I don't know what it's that about. The temperature still is rocketing up, but our cooling system should be good to control the temperature but that has been my tutorial on the advanced engine and it looks like the temperature is leveling out a bit now it's slowing down a lot it shouldn't get up to more than 100 here of course if you do ever see black smoke coming from your engine that means your temperature is very high it's over something like 110 or 120 and that your cooling is insufficient so you need to add more radiators more water to it or more heat sinks to try to keep it in in a good temperature radius basically so all right of course if you guys do have any questions you can join my discord or you can leave a comment down below on this video i'll get back to you as quick as i can but anyways that is all the time i have today for some stormworks advanced engines i'm going to be turning on my video while turning off my engine excuse me while i end this video but anyways if you guys like this please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up with stormworks and more of my content but i've never regret goodbye so if you'll need me and i need to go